Hello, Drawing 2 students. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well. I'm doing pretty good here in my house with my art supplies and my cat, so <laughs> you guys know that I'm living it up. Um, I'm making this video for you as a reference for while you're finishing your crosshatch projects. Um, a little bit about how it's used. Um, most of the time when you're doing thumbnails or comps or something like that, or just like a a random spontaneous sketch, that would be a good time to use Crosshatch. I'm honestly not sure how widely used Crosshatched is in finished work that is, you know, perhaps sold in galleries. I think a lot of the time they will use different techniques like um, veiling or blending or something like that, um, as opposed to allowing the directional lines to show up in their finished work. But that's what we're going to be doing for our project, is we're going to be using only directional lines to um, to fill in the mess. And, you know, as you guys are accustomed to doing on your projects, where you start with your outlines, and then you move on to, um, you know, filling in those shapes with value, you have to think about using lines to create masses of shapes. So it's not necessarily just an outline that you're doing for this project. Although outline is something that you could perhaps use if it is going to help the form of your project. So here is a just a quick sketch that I did. Um, this was in pencil, just spontaneous copying after a, a picture that I had seen. Um, this is crosshatch using a pen that I did for just a quick composition, trying to figure out if I liked the composition enough to create an etching of it. And here's actually an etching that I did recently that uses crosshatch, uses directional lines, that's what etching is, um, to create the picture. I didn't realize when I was a freshman that I was going to be doing etching, so I didn't really take it super seriously, but. Um, now etching is one of my favorite mediums and I use crosshatch almost every day so that's just something interesting that happened for me. So in crosshatch obviously you want to be using directional lines and the directional lines are going to inject energy and rhythm into the artwork that you're working on. Um, so here are a couple of examples of, um, of crosshatch um, works. On the left was a student work um, done by Kobe Jekyll a couple years ago, maybe like five or six years ago now. Um, and you can see the obvious directional line in the piece. So lines, they often they point to something, you know. Um, if I drew a line with an arrow on the end of it, you would look straight to that line. So you, 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 your eyes generally follow the direction of that line. So you can use that to your advantage in your piece if you want them to look at something or if you want the audience not to look at something. Um, you can use your directional lines to point to or away from or to be less or more complex so that you look at it or not at it depending on what you're trying to do in that area. Um, the directional lines indicate planes so um, as I said before as your eyes are following the lines you know that makes a lot of sense for all of the lines to be going the same direction here curves for the hair because we follow the hair around. Um, for um, the cheek over here you can see the lines are going this direction out to the side and then over here they drop down so here's a plane that is moving out and then here's a plane that is moving down so depending on how the plane changes you can change the direction of your line and that's something that is unique to crosshatch is um, is that you can even enhance the form of your work by using directional lines whereas in you know a charcoal project where you're you know, smooth toning or bailing or whatever, you don't have those lines show up in your final work. So this is something that's unique for this. Um, remember that, that crosshatch is a technique, not necessarily a medium. So you could use perhaps even charcoal or Conte or something like that to create a crosshatch drawing if you wanted to. Um, and again, this is the same as any other technique, is you use a technique to create form, to create the believability. So the believability of crosshatch isn't necessarily in its photographic, you know, representation, you know, it doesn't necessarily look like a photo, but it looks believable because it has form. You can see in this picture over here, the girl has, you know, 
uh, highlight, direct light, midtones, you know, even cast shadows down here, like all of the different parts of form are showing up. And that's helping us to believe, you know, that this is, you know, a representation of a girl in a dress in front of this monument. So here are a couple of sketches that were done in Crosshatch. Um, one of the important parts of Crosshatch for you guys when you're working on your projects is organization, just organizing the, la the lines so that it is clear and effective and not necessarily overwhelming or messy or anything like that. So you can see in this area, the form is working very nicely. You know, everything that is in the shadow is dark so that it um, appears as if it's in shadow, even reflected lights, and then everywhere that's in light. So the form is done very nicely. But there's really nowhere on here that is just super distracting, you know, by the lines. It's it's really helping the form. Um, whereas perhaps over on this drawing, you know, the lines perhaps a little bit aren't organized, you know, need to be cleaned up a little bit. So it is possible to have messy lines in crosshatch. So avoid as much as you can, you know, that messiness. There is a couple of different mistakes that you can make. Here are a few of them. Um, you can scribble. Scr Crosshatching is not scribbling. Although it's a fairly fast technique, you're able to get a lot done fairly quickly. Um, it is possible for it to look really um, unorganized and messy. So um, what I would say is take your time before you put down each stroke. Know where that stroke is starting and where it's stopping. Um, know how long the plane is, how wide the plane is um, that you're working on so that you don't end up with anything that's like rushed and scribbled. Um, another thing that you can do that would be considered a mistake in crosshatch would be um, having the lines too tightly together that you don't see the lines anymore. Um, in this drawing, the lines are sometimes so close together that it almost looks as if it was veiled or smooth tone. Um, so you do want to see those directional lines in the finished work. So here is the crosshatch demonstration that I was working on for my class. Um, here's a couple of things that I wanted to point out to you. One of the questions I get asked very often about crosshatch is, do I need the white of the paper to show through? You know, in the face, you can see that there's definitely parts of the white of the paper that are showing through here. Um, but for maybe a less complex area, maybe you want it to keep it a little more simple, less texture, for example, this dark of the hair over here, it's not necessary for you to have, you know, the white of the paper showing through in this area. Um, you can, you know, build a few more layers perhaps and cover over a little bit of that texture so that it is more simple a little bit more pushed back remember you do want to match those areas of like you know those more complex areas to those more simple areas so that the viewer doesn't get like overwhelmed by your piece another thing that you can do to keep it you know more simple is perhaps in the background or something like that you can choose to have just the one direction so this is a picture of my friends in front of the sky and the sea. So I chose to do the sky and the sea, generally just moving the same direction. Um, that adds, you know, a little bit less, um, you know, it makes it more simple. It takes a little bit of the complexity out of it so that, you know, it's pushed back. It's in the background. You don't look at it for quite as long. And that keeps you focused on, you know, the important areas of her face. So when you're actually doing your crosshatch, you want to think about having natural movements of your hand. If you're having an awkward movement of your hand, for example, like this, if you're moving outwards, I don't know, sometimes that creates an awkward line. So if you have your hand out this direction, I would say follow an up and down movement. You can see that these lines are a lot more, you know, consistent, they're less awkward, they're a little bit more flowy. So um, make sure that when your hand is out, you're not like pushing in and outwards like this. So give it a go, you know. Um, when I'm approaching the hair, I like to follow the rhythm of, you know, the hair. So here are the strands or the ribbons that you're seeing um, in the hair. Follow those. It's going to add a little bit more energy into your um, work. It'll, you know, if you were to go like the other direction, you know, if all of your hairs are going this direction, 
and you decide to crosshatch this way, it really obstructs the rhythm. So follow those directions for the hair. Um, it's going to end up being nicer, like more flow to it. So here's what I mean by changing the direction of the line based on the direction of the plane. The planes indicate the geometry of the object in relation to the light. So if the plane faces towards the light, like in you know, the left side of the nose over here faces towards the light, it will be in direct light or high light. And if it's facing away from the light, it will be in, um, in the shadow. Um, if it's not necessarily facing towards light or the shadow, usually you'll find it inside of the midtones turning into the shadow. So you can change the direction of your line based on those planes. For example, on the left side of the face of the nose here, the line's going this direction. For underneath the nose, a downward direction. And then for, you know, the top of the nose, you know, midtone turning into the light over the top. And then the left side of the nose facing downwards. So all of these are different directions.